The White House is eyeing Neera Tanden as a possible replacement for President Biden's domestic policy advisor, Susan Rice. This according to several reports. Tanden has served as an advisor to the Biden administration and a staff secretary. And though she was originally tapped to spearhead Biden's Office of Management and Budget, her nomination was met with opposition and eventually withdrawn. Prior to working in the administration, Tandon led the powerful Washington think tank Center for American Progress. News broke yesterday that Rice is stepping down, and if Tandon is confirmed, she will have big shoes to fill. Before joining the Biden White House, Rice served as President Obama's U.N. ambassador and then later as a national security advisor. In her current role in Biden's White House, she's helped oversee the passage of the COVID-19 relief bill, the bipartisan infrastructure revamp, and the Inflation Reduction Act. Neera Tandon is not an individual I would expect, expect that you would have much affection for. Am I wrong? There are few figures that animate and unite the left against them, like Neera Tandon, because Neera Tandon has been a bete noir of left interests since long before Biden, mm -hmm. the first vote was cast for Biden. And in fact, per perhaps the only successful a point of leverage the left has had in the Biden era has been to successfully fetch and bully online <laughs> until Neera Tanden was not made head of OMB. So Neera Tanden is, I would say, an attack dog for a Hillary Clinton mindset. Um, she was extremely hawkish. Uh, she first caught my attention when I believe Glenn Greenwald exposed that she had advocated uh, for like the take the oil approach in the Middle East. Yes. In order so that we could, uh, she, she was saying that if the budget is constraining us from engaging with the world, that was her terms, mm -hmm. then maybe these oil rich nations should help, should pay us so that we can continue to engage with the world. In context, engaging with the world was the Libya intervention, which was a total disaster, you know, the, the latest at the time in a string of foreign policy blunders um, overseen by the, you know, bipartisan neoconservative continuity from Bush to Obama mm -hmm. that Hillary Clinton herself was very much a part of. Yeah. We learned a lot about uh, Neera Tandon's thinking on these things because she, a lot of her emails were leaked in the context of the Podesta leaks. So there was this email exchange between her and Faz Shakir, who went on to uh, be Bernie Sanders' 2020 campaign manager, with this email titled, Should, we, Should Libya Pay Us Back? And mm -hmm. Shafaz is kind of trying to gently explain to her why the idea of disrupting a country and then bleeding it for resources is a bad idea. And her response is, oh, well, we have a giant deficit. They have a lot of oil. What's the problem here? This is, this is obviously ours for the taking. Uh, and that is just the tip of the iceberg of the kind of craven position she's taken. So CAP, the Center for American Progress, is a centrist neoliberal institution that has as its goal, or and it's what it has done, I shouldn't say what its stated goals are, but in effect has promulgated policies that are perceived by the broader public to be uh, uh, progressive, but are aimed at undermining sincere substantive reforms that are coming out of the left. So if Bernie says Medicare for all, Cap says, okay, what if we call this Medicare for all who want it, but it's really a privatization scheme, that, that sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. They're like the Pete Buttigieg of policy groups. Um, and on top of being the head of an organization and founding an organization that has those kind of anti-progressive goals, she personally, her behavior at that institution and, and elsewhere has been, I think, below the standards that most progressives would like to see. She's extremely belligerent, or she was extremely belligerent, I believe, on social media. Yes. Um, again, attack dog kind of mindset, which is why ultimately when she was nominated to oversee OMB, uh, her nomination faltered because Joe Manchin said he wouldn't vote for her because she had been so cruel yes. on social media. For all the Bernie bros got attention, she openly partnered with some of the most hostile bots online. No, I shouldn't say bots. They're real people. Uh, but people like Ragnarok Lobster, who famously, you know, at Electric Brother, I'm sorry, that's his actual handle, mm -hmm. who was tweeting about wanting to... I mean, like calling down, uh, girls with Down syndrome sluts and saying just crazy, horrible stuff. She's out here wishing happy birthday and like th throwing her like mm. digital arm around these people and holding them in close embrace. She outed a sexual uh, harassment um, victim in a meeting. Uh, she has referred to uh, friends of the show, Lee Fong and, and, and Zed Jelani, 
as, uh, as, as little freaks, I believe, in response to the news that Faz was going on, Faz used to work at CAP, was going on to advise Bernie. She, she uh, emailed saying, you know about this? Jesus, makes sense. All these freaks after Hillary are like his spawn, Zed, Lee Fong. I mean, she is someone who has I, pulled no yeah. punches against the left. I, I recalled her being a major Russiagate person, mm -hmm. so I just Googled near a tandem Russiagate, and mm -hmm. what comes up is a Twitter exchange with Erin Mate, mm -hmm. where, um, where she accuses him of running interference for Russian disinformation efforts. This is in October of 2020. And he says, well, you're promoting Russiagate. And um, yeah, she's like, you're, you're helping Trump because you're undermining the Russia narrative. It's yep. it's very te it's very textbook stuff, but she is so the audience understands. She is a particularly um, representative thought leader and 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 engaged person on probably all the worst excesses of like Hillary Clinton style yes. neoliberalism. Including some of the, the COVID misinformation early in the pandemic. You remember it was the end of the Democratic primary and the Sanders campaign was concerned about new CDC warnings that said that people shouldn't aggregate mm -hmm. in groups of more than 50. Um, you know, uh, this was all happening very quickly. And when I tweeted out, oh, these, there's this new CDC warning that is contravening what Simone Sanders, who was Biden's um, press secretary was saying at the time on the news, she quote tweets me and says, uh, is, is the Bernie campaign telling people not to vote? Like, because they very much wanted people to vote in the primary. They didn't want to postpone the primary, as some people were calling for at the time, until they got a, a handle on things. Then later, when it was in the general election, she started tweeting me on the exact opposite side of things, saying that, you know, Flor Florida's positive test rate seems to be going up quickly. People shouldn't be out here in the streets. The Republicans are trying to kill us, that kind of a vibe. So she's inconsistent. She's got really craven political motives. She very openly associates herself with people who are hateful mm -hmm. <laughs> and not progressive in the least. And she does all of this under this progressive banner, you know, Center for American Progress. So does Biden know that by picking her, he's provoking confrontation with the left? Is he so clueless he doesn't realize that this is someone who is uniquely reviled by progressives? Does he not care? And he's so he's so defeated your faction that he can rub salt yeah. in those wounds and it I mean, doesn't matter? I think, I think so I joked that that getting her, you know, uh, scuttling her appointment to OMB was the only thing the left had ever accomplished. I actually don't think it was about the left. Um, mm -hmm. We complained a lot, uh, and I think we made it more likely, perhaps, incrementally. But you, as you mentioned, Joe Manchin objected to her. Um, she's made a lot of enemies. Uh, and I think that this is more par for the course. The left has no power. It's unwilling to withhold its political support for liberal candidates, for the Democratic Party candidates. And ultimately, they know they're not going to be, what are we going to do? We're going yeah. to stand up and vote for Biden. Most, most people, are Bernie voters, are going to get a line and vote for Biden. Now, I do think that there is some sensitivity around this issue, which is part of why they've probably kind of announced this in the middle of this very busy news week and hoping that people have other fish to fry and aren't going to ho focus on this too much. Also, the left is kind of exhausted to have to have fought this fight and to have to do it all over again because they were going to appoint her somewhere. Look, Neera Tannen has been pretty terrible, but as a that's... She's, she's earned her right. The, the things that she has done mean that the Biden administration the, owe her a place as well. You're saying the, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance against <laughs> Nira Tandon? I, I think that the left is probably going to be disappointed here. Um, but we'll see what happens. That could be the tagline of just about every segment we do. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's life. More rising right after this.